so within the uh, context of climate change, um, artificial intelligence threats or exponential threats or the application of unsafe AIs, which is one of my passions, and also nuclear threats, which of course is something that you know, few of us can do something about unless you're a politician. So within this context, we also have the decision of the UN to apply the sustainable development goals, but the question is, how do we apply the 17? Because some of them, they're aspirational, but they're contradicting. If we focus on number one, uh, as we did over the past couple of decades, um, like China, you know, they managed to lift 30 million people every year out of poverty, and of course, if at the expense of climate, uh, because you know, every other week, I think they um, started a uh, uh, coal uh, plant, energy power plant. So the important task here is to apply these UN SDGs within planetary boundaries, and here I referred yesterday to a uh, to a research paper uh, that was done research not only the paper but research uh, paper based on research over the past 50 years on how to ap apply the UN SDGs within planetary boundaries which are nine off and so here I, um, I I shared with you what we've done over the past uh, since 1980s on the left hand side on the um, y axis you see the nine planetary boundaries so we left the green operating system and moved fast toward implementing more and more UN SDGs where, which are represented on the X um, axis. So here's the number of the UN SDGs out of the 17 that were implemented at any one time. So when we continue on this path or if we continue on this path, which is what we're currently doing, then we will end up 2050 out of a safe environment, planetary environment into uh, an area where we won't be able to implement all 17, maybe uh, 11. So what the um, Stockholm Resilience Center, they did a, uh, again a projection based on data over the past, collected over the past 50 years. What happens if we uh, try uh, go faster in the same way? We will end up with not more UN SDGs implemented, and we will not be able to get out of, uh, of the unsafe planetary boundaries. If we try harder, we will end up in the same space. But they identified a smart way, and this is what I would encourage every one of you to look at and see how within your environment, your act, uh, activities, series of activities you can apply. So these are five of them, five transformational policies that informed my decisions um, as to how to invest, when to invest, what kind of applications I should support, what kind of entrepreneurs, what kind of ideas. So number one is accelerated renewable energy growth, which is what we do. Invest in whatever we invest, you know, to make it sustainable. Number two, how can we accelerate the productivity growth? Uh, we know now that uh, the, pop uh, the population on the planet will increase significantly and we need to feed them. Number three, new development models. How can we learn what was done right by China and South, um, South Korea and so on? Um, how can we reduce inequality and re re redistribute wealth? This is something that um, you know all of us can do. And number five is uh, investment in education. And in my case, uh, how can we apply the UN Sustainable Development Goals within gender equality and, um, and in, in the um, entrepreneurial way? So given the fact that we know I'm a computer scientist, I do care about uh, technology a lot, and yes, tomorrow's speed of change will make us look like crawling. Um, and so one thing that I've not seen at this conference is a lot of discussion that comes or gravitates around this area. This is really, really important. So the fact that we're not talking about it tells me personally that it's not on our radar and we need to change it. So uh, what do I do? How do I apply these five things within my own activities uh, to, uh, to integrate the traditional investing that has been focused and still is, we live in a society that focuses on for profit only, on one hand, and traditional philanthropy that tried to set off um, the what's not done right, the for profit only run, and the integration between 
uh, these two and what are the ways that we're looking on, on right now. So for instance, impact investing is on the horizon and if you look at the way it is being applied, even there you see different ways, financial only or impact only, or financial first or impact first, which of course is in my view strange because we need to do it all. And this is what I stand for, this is what integral investing is actually supposed to do. And here I am looking at, I'm sharing with you, you can only achieve uh, what you measure. So what do we measure? So traditional investing uh, looks at profit only, which is the current paradigm. If you look at impact investing, it tried to integrate people, planet, and profit. But if you look in detail, then you see that they either do one, oh, social entrepreneurs, social only, or renewable energies, climate. And of course, the truth is um, the combination thereof. And uh, in our little way, in our own family office, uh, we are integrating the, uh, these, integrating the people, planet, and profit by applying what I came across, um, what's called the integral model, Ken Wilber integral theory. And this is, of course, a whole lot of stuff that goes in there. I only, I don't know how much, many more minutes I have. Not many, three but more. this is a way, three more. So this is a way um, that helps us look. It's a lens. We're changing the lens because you can only see as to the level of, you know, how good your glasses are. So we have extended our glasses to look at the interior dimensions, the culture, but also the individual development and also how that manifests on the outside. Again, I, I've written a book on this. It's coming out because many, many people have asked us how we've done it because this system that we have applied over the past uh, 20 plus years is extremely successful financially. So we've actually proven that if you include people and the planet in the conversation, you also reduce your risk and the result is of course better financial return, which of course you could use to you know, make a difference. So what is the process? Within the, w the investment process, um, particularly early stage, this is what I do, I uh, invest in young entrepreneurs, um, goes through from, uh, starts with deal screening, it goes through the due diligence process, which I will unpack a little bit, um, then uh, investment execution, when you decide to invest, what happens, up to the monitoring, <coughs> this is important. 3% uh, of the investment amount that we, um, that we perform, that we allocate, goes into developing the team, making sure that after the investment, the company really is able to get the support it needs in order to achieve what it has uh, been decided collectively, and then um, up to the exit. So what is the due diligence process that is based, all of it is informed by the integral model by Ken Wilber. But the due diligence process has five steps. The first one is the traditional one. That's what every investor does, venture capital or business angel, business plan, marketing, blah, blah, blah. And we decided to get rid of the lying. Because what's actually happening right now, the VCs lie to the uh, GPs, to the uh, general partners, to their investors, oh, I'm going to deliver you the 10X, the unicorn, blah, blah, blah. And then the entrepreneur doesn't have a choice. He has to say, oh, here's the J curve. Huh? So we decided to get rid of that. So what is the truth in there? You know, what are we doing together, not for the sake of money and the 10X and the unicorn, and everyone is running after those unicorns, but to save ourselves, to have a, an integral way of looking, integrate the people, planet, and profit with passion and purpose, because it's about us. You're gonna die, nobody's gonna take any of the stuff that we have with us. Where are we coming from, where are we going? And we're taking that into this consideration. So in terms of step one, everyone uh, knows what that is. I'm not gonna go into it. I only have two more minutes. Uh, step two, and here's where the difference comes in. I know it's not ten, ten, two minutes. <laughs> I'm actually through, aren't I? Uh, this is where the difference comes in. It's the UN SDGs applied within planetary boundaries. Um, and how we do that, uh, there are many, many measurement criteria, GEARS and uh, GEN and IRIS and you name them, we have them. And so this is extremely important. There are very few people who do this. 
uh, uh, three is the individual assessment. And I spoke yesterday to, I got a PhD in psychology because I wanted to know <laughs> how people evolve, how I evolve, you know, how do we reach the tip of the, the top of the Maslow pyramid? It's not an easy thing. But there are many ways of achieving that. This is a selection of many lines of development, many intelligences along which we evolve. And uh, step three um, goes into the details. We use the um, uh, Harvard development model, the LDMA is called. Uh, we also use the uh, sentence completion test uh, we had uh, Liora talk about yesterday about uh, uh, Suzanne Cook Reuters model, uh, also a Harvard uh, graduate. We apply that, and uh, what we are looking for, of course, is people who are evolved, who will keep their promises, because there's so many egocentric people who will tell you a great deal, but at the end, they don't mean it. So how do you ensure that the promise will be kept? Um, and so this is one model that I wanted to share. So we look for the top uh, 3%, 3 to 4% of uh, people who are showing up in terms of, you know, with, a, with an idea and want to be funded. Then the team assessment, 80% of the risk of any investment um, is associated with, with uh, the team. If the team fails, the investment fails. So this is extremely important. Here we also use uh, a bunch of, uh, of tools. And, um, and then we make our decision whether to invest or not. And with that, I'm actually done. Thank you very much.